Unang umaga po sa inyong lahat at waga po sa isa na namang episode ng online series ni Inang Pamatasan kung saan ang pagkatuto ay walang hanggan. Ito ang PNU Talks. Ako nga po pala si Lizette Flincer Vera at ako ang inyong learning from home buddy sa episode na ito. Ngayong araw ay pag-uusapan natin ang mga preconceived thoughts ng mga pre-service teachers patungkol sa DepEd sa session na pinamagatang DepEd 101 Early Childhood Edition. Reality versus Expectation This has been the most current trend nowadays from products, people, and places. Sa sobrang trendy nga po ay nag-over the bucket na ito sa kagawaran ng edukasyon na pinasikat ng mga pre-service teachers at nearly hired teachers sa field. From the idealistic build-up of the educational institutions about the field of teaching, sometimes realities hit hard to educational newbies when they got to experience the situation in the field leaving them amazed, inspired, confused, and enlight- enlightened all at the same time. Naway mabigyan ng kaunting taste of reality, ika nga ang ating mga future preschool teachers sa kanilang mga kakaharapin sa tunay na buhay ng pagtuturo. So I've asked some of my students um, enrolled in early childhood education about their expectations in depth ed in terms of early childhood education and these are some of their answers first stop is teachers have a lot of tasks given by depth ed that needed to be done almost the same day where pupils need attention the second one embracing of early childhood curriculum needs to be observed ayon pa sa kanila depth ed is equipped with the best teachers and knowledge workers in the field yet quality and quantity wise and in terms of facilities support and help from our government we are lacking ayon pa din sa kanila quality education means equally divided and equitable opportunities for all academic level coming from the authorities and collaboration between parents to let the children attain the highest growth they deserve so kapag susumahin po natin It all boiled down to curriculum, facilities, support, and teachers. Ganyan, iisa-isahin po natin ito at atin tatalakayin kung ano-ano nga ba yung mga nangyayari sa DepEd. Simula natin sa embracing of ECE curriculum needs to be observed. Expectation. Reality. Tingnan po natin. So, DepEd's ECE curriculum is hindi nga po talaga hard to embrace. As they say, mas worth it na ma-fall pa sa kindergarten curriculum kesa sa kanya. O, di ba? So, ito po yung Korean character na sumisimbolo sa kindergarten uh, curriculum. So, tingnan po natin mamaya kung ano nga po bang ibig sabihin ng uh, Korean character na yan. So with the National Kindergarten Curriculum Guide as the Bible, sigurado ka na ang pagtuturo ay hindi hindi lalabo. So the items in the rectangles, as you can see here sa ating slide, ay yung mga theoretical basis po for teaching and learning in the early years, which are founded on constructivism, integrative, thematic, collaborative, inquiry-based, and reflective teaching in play-based approaches with the application of the developmentally appropriate practices or DAP. So this supports the principles of child growth and development and the learning program development assessment. Tingnan naman po natin yung mga circles na nakikita natin sa picture na yan. So the circles, the yellow there represents the learning areas in grade 1 and the blue there is about the curricular themes in the National Kindergarten Curriculum. So yung interlock ellipses po, yung po ibig sabihin yan, represent the domains that have to be nurtured and equally imparted to holistically developed children. Now, balikan po natin yung Korean character na nakita natin sa unang slide natin. So, ano po ba yung nabuo kapag nag-interlock po yung mga ellipses? Yung Korean character na po yan ay tinatawag na kot o yung tawag sa kanila ng bulaklak. Ayon po sa kindergarten curriculum, ito po ay sumisimbolo ng gradual unfolding but steady development. 
as expected po of every child. So the child is seen as being in the process of blossoming like a flower bud whose development should not be forced lest it lose its chance to fully mature. Ngayon, tingnan naman po natin yung pangalawang um, preconceived assumption ng mga bata. So teachers have a lot of tasks given by DepEd that needed to be done almost the same day where pupils need attention. So tingnan po natin if ito po ba ay expectation or reality. So this turns out to be a reality. So mga kapatid, ito ay isang malaking realidad. Teachers in DepEd both in kindergarten and the rest of the classes have a lot of add-on tasks other than teaching. So teaching is the main job description and the rest of the roles molds the teacher to be a perfect example of the holistic person. So dami nga na ginagawa, eh syempre mabubuo talaga yung pagka-holistic ng isang guro, o di ba? Biruan nga namin is uh, ng mga guro, ay ang mga guro ay may multiple personalities channeling different alter egos and jobs from being mainly a teacher in a moment and then a nurse, counselor, social worker in a split second Pagkatapos, balik na naman sa magiging teacher after patting the uniform and handling the chalk again. It could honestly, honestly be overwhelming at times, especially when everything is an instant deadline. Na kung saan pag re-revive ng deadline na yan para ma-extend ay hindi na isang option. Pero syempre, may magandang dulot din naman po ang sitwasyon na ito sa amin. The good side though is that we became expert jugglers. Yan, being able to juggle teaching while looking after the learners and at the same time accomplishing the needed reports and updates. We were able to become more aware of managing our time and appreciate the wholeness of being a teacher in DepEd. Minsan nga nagugulat na din kami na nakakaya na mong tapusin yung magkabila ang gawain. Because of the tasks given, nalinang na namin ang aming mga kakayahan na maging magicians. With the whip of a hand, we could make things appear immediately, lalo na kung may mga monitoring. Sa kabuuan, hindi naman po talaga maiiwasan ang ganitong mga gawain. They could however be lessened if given the time where teaching and learning process is not compromised. Ngayon, tingnan naman natin yung isa pang aspect na pinupoint ng mga bata. Equipped with the best teachers and knowledge worker knowledge workers in the field, yet quality and why quality and quantity wise dot dot dot. So ito nga ba ay isang expectation or ito nga ba ay isang reality? And ang sagot ay expectation at reality then this could be both an expectation and a reality alam niyo po ba na kindergarten teachers in DepEd and I'm sure sa mga private institutions din po natin are really some of the most skilled resourceful and overall awesome teachers that you could encounter they had the best dedication and vision when it comes to dealing with situations related to kindergarten Pag simula pa lang po ng pasokan, simula na din yung tabaho nila agad. Nagkakandak na sila ng early childhood care and development checklist to individual kinder learners po yun, ha? From morning to afternoon and aside from the actual conduct of classes pa din. I had been given the opportunity to work hand-in-hand -hand with kindergarten teachers for two amazing years and isa po talaga sila sa mga grupo ng guro na aking hinahangaan at tunay na nire-respeto. So isa pa din sa mga sinasabi ng mga bata na in terms of facilities, support, and help from our government that we are lacking. So ito nga ba ay isang expectation or isang reality? Actually po, this is also both a reality and an expectation. It is true that generally the public schools are lacking in terms of facilities. We do not have the facilities of the private schools nor the facilities mentioned in the books that a school must have. So it does limit our movement and intentions as to changing up the way we deliver our classes. We want our kindergarten learners to have the best simulation of learning. Unfortunately, we usually settle to what is available and doable. We work around what we have and make the best out of it. Pero syempre, may maganda pa rin naman itong idudulot. Kami pa ba sa DepEd? Sabi nga namin, no facilities, 
No problem. Eh, di tingin-tingin at gamitin din na makikita sa paligid. Totoo nga din naman na uh, the amount of instructional materials and educational toys needed in a kindergarten level is quite high. We always consider this as one of the most important stages in educational ladder. Kaya if possible, ibigay ang lahat ng pangangailangan. Truth be told, however, we do not have the abundance of such materials. Teachers opted to use recyclable materials as educational toys instead, making use of flattened bottle cups or tansans, mga ganon, wooden beads as counters or washed stones. For fine motor skills development, meron din silang ginagamit na, for example, sa lacing, ginagamit nila yung yarn or yung mga shoelaces. We may not have the abundance of materials but the creativity, yan lang, yung creativity and resourcefulness po ng mga teachers are unparalleled. Pinaka-importante naman kasi ay yung maganda at positibong alaalang maiiwan mo sa mga bata pagkatapos ng kanilang pagiging kinder. Di ba ang sarap ding marinig sa mga mag-aaral na sa kabila ng kakulangan ay mababalikan nila ng may ngiti yung mga alaala noong kinder pa sila. Gumagawa naman din ng paraan ang kagawaran para matagunan ito. Yun yung positibong aspeto siya. So noting na naman natin yung isa pang sinasabi nila. So in terms of support daw from our government, we are lacking. So ito kaya isang expectation or ito kaya isang reality? Para po sa akin, and as per observation din naman, ito ay isang expectation. This is mostly an expectation because we are filled actually with support needed in terms of instruction, in terms of instruction and curriculum. It is with the actualization and utilization of this support um, that makes or breaks that statement about. It, it's not really on the provision, but it is more on the actualization and utilization. Trainings for kindergarten, for example, uh, for kindergarten teachers, trainings uh, is a big check. Buildings for kindergarten learners, also a progressing big check. Along with the construction of the building comes instructional materials, educational toys, and materials na kailangan din ng teachers. Nakapackage po kasi yon. Updating of principles and educational updates in kindergarten is also made possible through seminars and partnerships with private organizations. Isa pa pong statement na binigay ng mga bata ay quality education means equally divided and equitable opportunities for all academic level coming from the authorities. So ito nga ba isang expectation o isang reality? Ayan. So again po, ito po ay isang expectation din at isang reality din. Kasi meron po tayong batas uh, na all children age 5 as of June of the current year is obligated to be in kindergarten. Currently po, medyo nag-adjust po siya sa panahon ng pandemic, eh, umabot po tayo ng October of the current year. So they are still in the process uh, provided with equal and equitable opportunities through their admission sa kindergarten po. And meron din po tayong feeding program para sa mga bata, especially sa kindergarten, kahit na po sa panahon ng pandemic. Ito po yung isa, collaboration between parents to let the children attain the highest growth they deserve. So ito po nga ba ay isang expectation or isang reality? Ganun din po, ito po ay isang expectation din at isang reality. This is both an expectation and reality since this is the first step of the educational ladder. Collaboration between the parents and the teaching community must be cemented firmly in the first place. Yung unang araw pa lang po, cemento, hina po natin agad yung collaboration na aspect. Even in the conduct of the first ever assessment sa kanilang buhay in the form of ECCD, parents had been the most reliable source of information also for the social-emotional section of it. The tasks to be done and the amount of waiting time siguro ng mga parents na kanilang ini-spend sa, sa labas ng classroom for the kids to accomplish the tasks is a sign that both the parents that both the parents and the teachers collaborate in a sense towards supporting the child's growth. Pero 
meron din pong not so good part in terms of collaboration kasi hindi naman po, this is a case-to-case basis. Kasi parents are not molded or cut uniformly, di ba po? Priorities differ from person to person. Meron po talaga mga parents na talagang mag effort ng todo in terms of fostering collaboration sa school. And meron din naman po mga parents na hindi naman shada nag effort in terms of fostering collaboration sa school. So how is DepEd? So DepEd could be summarized as day and night, winter and summer. It is a love and hate relationship sometimes. Pero meron din naman mga chocolate and ice cream moments. At saka contrasting kasi medyo Mount Everest minsan and medyo Mariana Trench din minsan. And rain and storm. So paano nga po ba uh, makakatagal sa DepEd? Tingnan po natin, magpo-provide po tayo ng DepEd Survival Kit. Ayan, so sa mga pre-service teachers dyan, paki Okay, take note ng mga survival lessons natin kung paano tayo makakasurvive sa DepEd. Una, Confucius says, be like a tree. Oh, ganun. Medyo maging puno po muna tayo. Paano ba maging puno? Kasi sabi nila, sabi dito, trees are survivors. For you to do the same, you'll have to know when to stand strong and when to bend in the wind. Sometimes po, marami po mga pangyayari sa in yung educational or professional development then in whichever careers naman siguro, kailangan lang po natin alamin when we belong in a certain organization or department when to stand strong and when to bend to the wind, just like a tree. Sunod po, learn to weather the storm. Kasi things change po constantly in the educational system, um, DepEd maybe or in other educational institutions. The more flexible you are, the better you'll be able to sustain the frequent and often challenging storms that blow through your classroom and educational career. Number three, seek out easy data sources. Ito naman yung magandang sa, maganda sa DepEd kasi marami na rin mga teachers, groups sa social media na handa talagang tumulong sa mga pangangailangan sa halos lahat ng aspeto ng pagtuturo at pagiging guro. Kaya magkakasurvive ka talaga. Five, be weird. Be yourself, not a teacher. Stand out, have a brand. Be memorable, but more importantly, Make your lessons and content memorable. Number six po, know when to keep quiet and smile. So that doesn't mean naman you were wrong or that you don't change or you won't change, but you have to know lang po when to make the change visible and when to keep quiet and smile. Seven, know who to go for what. Sa pumumuhay po sa DepEd, marami ka talaga makakasulubong na mga pangyayari na susubok sa iyong kalooban at kagustuhang maging guro sa kagawaran. Especially po sa mga pre-service teachers at sa mga newly hired teachers. Pero syempre naman po case-to-case -case basis pa din. Pero generally, ganun po yung nangyayari. Marami din naman uh, magiging oportunidad sa lahat ng may bukas palad. Sa mga pagkakataon nito, lagi lang tandaan na may mga gabay tayo in the persons of our co-teachers, school heads, and supervisors. Napakaswerte po namin sa aming division na ramdam po talaga namin ang gabay at palaging suporta ng mga taong nabanggit. Kahit na sa mga bagay na labas sa trabaho. Yun nga lang, kailangan mo din talagang piliin ang mga mapagkakatiwalaang mga tao sa mga medyo nagpapanggap lang. Eight po, never ever lose your sight of purpose. Susubukin ka talaga sa halos lahat ng aspeto. Lagi mo lang tandaan ang pinakadahilan mo kung bakit nagsimula ka. Maraming gugulo talaga sa isipan mo na idudulot ng sitwasyon o mga tao. Pero alam mo yung pinaka-go-to pinaka solution ng mga teachers dyan, pikit at huminga ng malalim kapatid. Damhin sa puso kung saan ba talaga o kung saan mo talaga gusto pumunta o saan mo gustong tumungo. Pag nagawa mo yon good to go ka na. Extended na naman yung stay mo. Ayan. So, bilang pagtatapos, 
ay uh, i-share ko lang po sa inyo yung mga talagang natutunan ko for the past eight years that I've been with DepEd. So being in DepEd enabled and most of this po ay nakuha ko talaga sa first year ko sa DepEd nung na-assign po ako sa isang barrio school. At ito po talaga yung nagpa-realize sa akin ng lahat ng mga realizations sa sa teaching career at the start po pa lang. So being in DepEd enabled me to ayan realized a lot of things about life. Kasi yung na-assign po na school sa akin ay talagang different po siya kung saan po ako nakatara, sa syudad po ako nakatara at na-assign po ako sa barrio school. At yung pamumuhay doon at yung sitwasyon ng mga bata at ng komunidad, talaga pong nagpapukaw ng aking diwa ba or re realizations about life in general. Pero natutunan ko din naman pong naging matapang, brave. Brave para harapin yung mga hamon. Brave para harapin yung mga adjustments. Brave para harapin, i-accept yung mga opportunities na ibinibigay ng sitwasyon, ng lugar o ng panahon. And of course, volunteer. Ayan, volunteer kasi po alam ko po yung mga teachers, hindi lamang po kindergarten teachers, pati yung generally yung mga teachers, eh, volunteerism is real talaga po. Volunteer. Terrorism is in our blood. Especially pag na-assign po kayo sa mga lugar na mountain schools or barrio schools, talagang ma-feel nyo po na it's really good to give and to share. Humility. Ayan, humility. Isang bagay talaga na magpaparealize sa'yo when you are working in a department, when you are working in a cert certain situation, when you are put in a place that is not familiar to you, is to learn to be humble. Kasi marami na po pagkakataon na syempre if you are still out of, fresh out of the educational institution, fresh out of college, you are filled with this confidence, with this ideas and everything that oh, sige, go, let's go, let's go. But there are really moments in your life that even in the first year of your teaching when you realize na no, humility really is the way to go. Discern. Yes, discern. Sabi ko nga kanina, there will be a lot of arrows pointing anywhere and everywhere na magpapagulo ng iyong isipan, na magpapagulo ng iyong kalooban, magpapagulo ng iyong puso. But being in DepEd and spending time in DepEd really taught me a lot of lessons that discerning things, discerning good from bad things is really one of them. And of course, taking a risk. Siyempre ba naman, no? The biggest, siguro the biggest lesson that DepEd will give you is you should always take a risk. Take a risk in your profession. Take a risk in in your in how you conduct your classes. Take a risk uh, in, in whichever direction you want to go. But DepEd is giving you that boost of confidence to take that risk. Because taking that risk could open up a lot of opportunities also. And taking that risk could also open a lot of lessons pa din. Ayan. At dyan na po nagtatapos ang ating session ngayong araw. Huwag pong kalimutan na mag-comment ng inyong mga katanungan at mga kuro-kuro tungkol sa ating episode ngayong araw. At huwag din pong kalimutan na i-like at i-share ang mga episode natin. Sa muli po, ako po si Lisette Felincia Rivera at sumainyo ang PNU Talks.